ultimately, you know, it would cost us so much money to focus on any kind of Mars program. And Eric, as you know better than anybody, the plans change with every administration. There's such a lack of consistency. I think he and I can actually agree on this. There's such a lack of consistency between presidential administrations that one administration, it's Mars, and the next, it's the moon, and the next, it's like, actually, let's not do either of those things. And it really keeps NASA from being able to have a steady flow of money towards some specific program. I think that if we're going to go to Mars for science reasons with human scientists, that's a different story. We've talked a lot about the cost of going to Mars. A single human mission would cost, Sharon's right, hundreds of billions of dollars, right? Um, but the reality is that over the last 20 years, we have seen a revolution in reusable space flight, and we are potentially on the cusp of having reusable mass, you know, large reusable rockets that can put lots of payload into orbit. Now, SpaceX has a long way to go to make that a reality, but that's a vision, and they've made credible steps toward that. And so you are talking about, for the first time, having the ability to send lots of stuff, and humans would need lots of stuff on Mars, and to do it for a reasonable cost, because, you know, Starship launches are not going to cost $2 billion. You know, they're going to cost on the order of tens of millions of dollars, most likely. So I, I would push back that, that this is a, you know, a trillion-dollar program and I would also kind of push back and say that, that it's probably not going to entirely be funded by governments. Um, there will be commercial participation and investment. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's not something that's going to break the bank of the U.S. government because um, it's going to be done differently or it's not going to be done at all. Like the U.S. government will never send a human mission to Mars, I don't think. 